Okay, so let's continue talking about lattice models and see what we can learn from them. And it turns out that lattice models are not only useful for modeling gases, but we can also use them to model liquids as well, or fluids. Uh, so let's consider what it might look like if we use a lattice model to describe a liquid. So a liquid, as you know, is something that uh, occupies the entire uh, uh, volume, uh, rather than expanding to fill its volume like a gas, it occupies the lower portion of, of the gas and molecules are not separated from one another. So let's say we have a lattice model for a fluid. If I'm going to take eight molecules, then they're going to occupy, in this small example, they're going to occupy all the eight uh, lattice sites in this model, and I don't want to include vacant sites down at the bottom. So the, 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 the fluid's going to fill the container from the bottom up. So if I want to talk about fluids mixing, which is what I do want to talk about, then I need to be able to describe, let's say I put that beaker of a fluid next to a different beaker with the same size, but in this beaker I'll put a different fluid. I'll put uh, molecules of a different type in this beaker. And let's say I've got an equal sized beaker with eight of these molecules that I'm calling B, molecules of B rather than molecules of A, so these green molecules. So now what I want to do to understand what happens when the molecules, when the fluids mix or don't mix is, let's say, pour those molecules into the same container. So now I have a total of volume of 16. And really uh, what I've got is, uh, if I want to describe, so here's the microstate of the system. I've told you where every individual uh, molecule is in that combined volume. The macro state of the system, the way I've described it, is I've still got eight molecules on the left side uh, of uh, type A, and on the right side I've got eight molecules of type B. So the macro state would be uh, eight of these on the left and none of them on the right. So that's enough for you to, to uh, put the molecules down the same way I have here. The multiplicity, how many ways are there that I could have drawn microstates consistent with this macrostate? There's, there's only a way to put eight molecules of the red molecules on the left, orange molecules on the left, and eight green ones on the right. But mathematically, that's like saying, how many ways are there to choose uh, which eight of the spots to occupy with eight molecules on the left? And and, so I'm multiplying, how many ways are there to choose which zero of the states on the right uh, to occupy with the orange molecule. So eight choose eight is one, eight choose zero is one, that product just comes out to one. There's only one way of drawing a microstate, this one, that is consistent with that description. So what we want to understand is uh, what this lattice model has to say about whether fluids mix or don't. So I can draw other configurations that show the fluids mixing partially or fully, and the multiplicity, the probabilities, will tell us uh, how likely those uh, particular outcomes are. So let's consider a state so where I've still got this combined volume of 16 grid positions. And let's say I want to let the molecules partially mix. I want to find out how likely it is that most of the molecules have stayed separated but one molecule has moved over to the other side of the box. So my macro state would be seven of these on the left and one of them on the right. So that's again my, my macro state. I can draw an individual micro state just so it's clear what I'm talking about. I still have eight of each type of particle, so I'm going to fill every box, uh, every grid position in the box. And I can ask, how likely is it that this, um, uh, or what's the multiplicity? How many different microstates could I have drawn that are consistent with this macrostate? How many ways do I have of choosing which seven spots on the left to occupy with orange molecules and which one spot on the right to occupy 
with green molecules. And you might ask why I don't also include a binomial coefficient here for describing how the green molecules behave, but once I've told you which seven spots are occupied by orange molecules on the left, there's no more choices to be made. All the, the green molecules are specified. Same thing on the right. If I've told you which one spot is occupied, all the other ones have to be occupied by green molecules. So 8 choose 7 uh, is 8. 8 choose 1 is also 8. So the product there is 64. Um, so it turns out that the multiplicity for this partially mixed system where one molecule is crossed over to the other side is 64 times more likely. There's 64 ways to draw this. There's only one way to draw this. So it's 64 times more likely that the fluids mix at least a little bit. <coughs> but of course, that's not the most probable thing that will happen. I can, cont I can ask questions about any degree of mixing I want, but it turns out, not surprisingly at this point, perhaps, if I ask the question, how many microstates are there that can be described by four orange molecules on the left and uh, four of them on the right? So if that's my microstate, I want to put four molecules down on the left somehow and then four of them on the right somehow. The rest of them, green molecules, four on the left and four on the right for the green molecules. Then the multiplicity will be, how do I choose which four of eight spots to occupy with orange molecules on the left, and how do I choose which four of eight spots to occupy with orange molecules on the right? Eight choose four uh, is... 70, so 70 times 70, 4,900 is the numerical answer we get here. So even for this small system of only eight molecules in, in each beaker that I've mixed together, turns out that the, the mixed system, where they're fully mixed, half uh, and half, that is almost 5,000 times more likely than uh, having the system remain completely unmixed. So that tells us two things. tells us an answer to the question why it is that fluids mix together. When I mix two fluids together, why do they not stay separated? Why do they mix together? Uh, the real answer to that question is because it's much more probable that they'll find the mixed configuration than the, they'll find this rare configuration where the fluids are separated. Um, the other thing it tells us is <coughs> excuse me, uh, that, again, it's not just uh, it is only overwhelmingly likely that the fluids will mix together. It's not guaranteed that the fluids will mix together. It is possible to find a configuration that represents a separated configuration. But again, the larger the system gets, the larger these values of n that I'm taking factorials of, the larger this number will get, and the more overwhelmingly likely it will be that the fluids mix. And it's also worth pointing out that, again, because we haven't built any chemistry into this model, we haven't said whether these are mole molecules or water molecules or methanol molecules or oil molecules or so on, uh, for this simple case, we get the same answer for every pair of fluids. We don't have the ability yet to distinguish why uh, water and methanol mix together fairly well, but water and oil don't mix together. So once we start building chemistry into the problem, then we'll begin to see some nuances in these answers. <coughs>